Oh, I've done it. Oh, oh, we're on pausing. Oh my God. Did you see all those pings just show up? That was amazing. Okay, well, that's unfair because I just bought my battle pass and I want to open everything. But I can't because the game started. Can you, I mean, you, you chose this actually. time. You chose. I could, I could, I could. <laughs> I think what? what? Just happened. What did that say? Taking things, see, they, uh, they muted them. Admin, not a BM boss. <laughs> I, I really do love just the, the chatting and everything. Did they lower where last later, hits nerds. and denies are? Yeah, they That's did. I what really I'm hate noticing. It. Okay. I really, really hate it. <laughs> it's kind of in a weird spot. It's just like it's equal distance from the top and the bottom now, right? Like, but I just, yeah, why? Like, I'm gonna have to, you know, move all my sponsors on my stream and everything. Yeah. <laughs> This game could have... Oh, ooh, okay. So, also... I don't know. I'm just seeing a bunch of things before we get started. Like, last hits, denies, current, and goal, and all that stuff. I don't know why it's showing me that, but... I love weird. that this uh, Undying's gone all Venom first, by the way. I think uh, far too often, like, these Undying's feel so useless in the lane because the precision fours go, like... I don't know, like, boots or something. And then Undying, if he doesn't get his first hit off, can, like, never hit them, ever, right? Because they just run away. <laughs> And they're actually changing up. They're putting the Legion top lane on uh, on Quincy Crew. Well, that's what it seems like it is for now. We'll see if there's any lane swapping that goes on because we've been seeing a lot of that. I feel like all over in in, in the regions that I've seen, South uh, Southeast Asia, China, I see a lot of just rotating of lanes, looking for that best possible matchup, and it all it ends up coming down to you know TPs and whatnot, and if you're able to move. So SVG has blocked the small camp in the bot lane, so no pool is going to be happening for business associates, unfortunately for them. Just on the edge there. So, what makes this good for Quincy Crew? Like, why have they made the decision to swap these, uh, you know, their off laner and their safe laner? Great question. Um, I don't think they want to put the Legion up against the Undying in the laning stage. I think that was the idea, because they assumed the Undying would be laning with the Weaver, but... But um, they started all three heroes top on the business associate side. And then the, the uh, Nyx was just TP'd bot to lane with the Weaver. So they get this Undying against the Legion in the end anyway. And I think Lelis is going to be happy to lane up against the Eidolons as well. Because he has more chance to kill them off with the uh, overwhelming odds. I keep looking up high for the CS chart. My eyes got to have to adjust. It's such a natural movement to look towards the corner of the screen and find yeah. the CS there. But now I've got to like... <laughs> I look towards the top left corner and then I adjust towards the middle. It, it really is weird. I, I, I don't know if anybody else really understands that, but it's like being focused on the screen and seeing more on the screen is definitely weird. Quinn has 11 last hits out of 12 mid so far, by the way. He's doing really well. And that's what you said. It was going to be an easier time for the Storm Spirit. So far, it's showing to be that way. Beastmaster sitting at 7-1, so 5 CS behind. I mean, we'll see where Storm's going to go and what he's going to accomplish uh, with this his, his, easy lane. He's got his bottle coming out first already as well. So I'm, s I'm not a Storm player, so I don't know this, but I assume you still go for the bottle first, even though there's no two-minute runes anymore, like every game. I guess it depends on how well your lane goes, but it's because he's had such a good time. He's like, yeah, I can just get away with it. No salves needed for now. And that's some of what we've seen over, over mid in the times that we've casted together recently is a lot of regen being, or a lot of gold being spent on regen for mid. And now he's got this bottle. He should, theoretically, I mean, with the tangos, be able to sustain towards that four minute mark. And I wonder if we'll see Quincy Cruz send a support or two over towards mid to make sure that he can uh, secure that refill. If you don't get it at the four, you have it at the five with the bounty rune, but... Yeah, but I assume it'll probably be the lich that comes to rotate. Um, I mean, MSS might on the Phoenix, but I feel like this uh, Nature's Prophet doesn't need too much help in the laning stage. You know, at least for now, it's going well for you are. 16 and 7. We've seen at 12 and 0, so Quincy Crew, their lanes, uh, mid and uh, bottom, have been pretty good. 
Yeah, it's still all relatively even though. But the, the, my point before was that like business associates have to be playing from ahead, right? Like to be winning. I, I don't. Feel, I feel like if they ever fall behind, their game's really difficult. So, um, like the laning stage almost needs to be going a little bit better for them than it is at the moment. What? I think it's going to come down to the level sixes as well. Like how much can Envy do with his rotations? Yeah. Did you? I, I just sorry. I got. It. Defocus for a second as that bounty showed up, <laughs> pulled me from the game. Um, Moo has no regen left in his bot lane, by the way, on the Lich. I'm oh, sorry, on the Weaver, because this SVG Lich has just been bullying him out the whole time. And that's really what we said was going to come was the Frost Blast coming through constantly. And you said it was going to be the 201 or the 2 1, which, yeah, I mean, he could throw it right again at Moo. And look at this, it's just, just instantly first blood. Easy peasy. Did he have, and he's got his courier that will continue to come out with a salve, three tangos, and a mango, but not quickly enough. And he uh, he did take the invis rune though on the next, so Quinn gonna be unavailable to uh, to take that one to fill up his bottle. Yeah, he got the invis, but that means I mean he's got it in twenty seconds. Just has to get over to the bounty rune. It does pull him from the lane for a second. Although snaking wants to control this bounty rune and. He wants to make sure that he can't refill that bottle. It's a really good job by Snaking to do something like this. And now SVG oh, gets sprouted by Yawar, ends up getting the kill, and turns into bounty time where Moo, Fear, they grab two, and Snaking grabs a third. And that I mean, means your bottle mean, stays empty for even longer, though, on Quinn. But your SVG's going to TP mid here and refill Quinn's bottle. Like, uh, yeah. That's why the death's not even massively bad, right? Yeah, true, true. Spot sneaking. I assume SVG knows there's going to be a ward down here. Like, it's either where he put it or probably. Yeah, he, he thinks there's a ward there because that's where the Nyx has been, right? But uh, unfortunately, not going to be the case. So, Fear Force to walk all the way back. He's going to TP back in the lane, so he holds that TP for now. Brax will take over the lane solo. 24 and 12. Not terrible. Top of the CS for his team. Look at the nature, dude. This nature prophet has 22 denies, which obviously some of them are going to be trees. They might mostly be trees, but even so, like, you are doing really well at the moment. Chikuchi forward, and you are just a 1v1 right now that he's happy to take. And yeah, he's look at this. He denies both range creeps there. Ooh. Oh, oh God, deny yeah, from Moon. Right on that, uh, right on that catapult. Something that you saw that you were was trying to set up on. What's this envy rotation as well? I'm unsure about they this. See I mean, he hit several sticks, but like, they have all these summons up here. But there's like, you're trying to push into a legion, right? Like, he has all the wave clear in the world with this uh, overwhelming odds. They have no catapult either. So, what's the play here? Like, at least Snaking's getting mid XP in the, at the same time, but. It feels like a, a big waste at the moment for Envy, like with the amount of time and resources he's put up here so far. And even if they pressure, like, Yawar can just throw a Wrath of Nature right now. He's level yeah, 6. Like, look, at the, look at the overwhelming odds. Like, I love how Brax waited to summon the Necrobooks until after he'd used it, but... How are they supposed to be pushing this tower right now? I guess if Envy comes over, then... They'll just pressure them away, pretty but... Tanked, actually. <laughs> The question is, does Quincy Crew just give this up? Uh, they're going for a tier one of their own. They're putting a lot of pressure on over at bottom, but at the same time, I think they can definitely make a play of saving their tier oh, one tower. Uh, it's still might TP up, but yeah, he is. Well, TP in, Tombstone committed from fear. You've also got MSS here trying to get the kill. Soul Rift was already used, so a quick 125 gold there for Quinn. They've got the electric vortex, though. Get the kill on a fear. Not only that, they grab themselves a duel. TP from Brax, rotation over from Yoar, who did use that Wrath of Nature. And they defend the tower, they get dual damage. And that's that play. perfect. I don't understand. I mean, that, that just looks so weird to me. I will say Yoar used both his TPs coming top, so he's not going to go back bottom for a little bit. I wonder if he goes back bottom at all. Like, I think, yeah, at least Moo gets a little bit of space down here in the bot lane. No, you're right. But... 
like that's such a big first rotation as well with the first necrobook usage. Like Envy's still level six and Quinn's like Quinn's the whole level ahead of him now, right? Because of all this time that Envy spent up in the top lane. Another Invis rune was picked up by Snake King. Yeah, so now finally Yuara comes back over towards bottom. He's got Wrath of Nature up again in just the 12 seconds. They're not really playing with disgustingly long cooldowns on the side of the Dire. I don't know. It's, I mean, their cores can fight like all the time, right? Yeah. Because Nature Prophet, like you say, has no cooldown really. Like Storm's just dependent on mana, not really on cooldown. Mid? They're going to get themselves a kill on a Snake King. It's... Quinn just going in real hard up past the tier one tower. I mean, it's really not much stopping them at the moment. There's the omnipresence like, of the black hole now, but again, we talked about this earlier. Like when you don't have the Nyx assassin, your lockdown is just primal roar and black hole. Envy does have this uh, helm of dominator coming out now, so his uh, his like map presence is going to be felt a lot more at least now uh, with this item. Nice little poor man shield for the Weaver. That's pretty good. Got a little bit of agi. Um, I was wondering what item build UR would go for as well. He's actually got this Maelstrom queued up, which I think is fine. Like, I think they understand that if, as long as they scale, okay, they should be uh, feeling pretty good. I will say, though, that this uh, this early game is going better for, um, for business associates than I thought it would. Like, they took this uh, top tier one right, and normally the players for most other teams is that they try and do the opposite at the same time, right? Where, like, they're, they're carry Tiki's bot and they take the tower and they just trade. Um, but they and they're gonna find... Line up. Oh, they find Brax and... I don't really know what he's supposed to do to defend himself there. And again, it, it, it was something we talked about in the draft is that deeper vision. When you have the vision, you have the ability to just come through and, and blow up these heroes. Oh, Snakey, you've got to cancel his clarity that he just popped. The value. Come on. Come on, Snakey. They've got He's coming over. They a... have the lockdown. They have an impale. They'll have themselves primal roar, as well as the centaur. They'll get the break. Oy, but he misses the stun. Yeah, I, it, like sometimes you would say, oh, why doesn't he just use the stun out of Invis? But I think if he doesn't get the hit off there, they probably don't kill him. So, got to go for play. Top lane now the black hole on. used. Layliss, he'll survive this for now, but Moo. He makes the rotation in, and Quinn's here with Yawar. So this is a big commitment. You've already used the black hole. They'll get the kill on a Brax. They look over his Moo with the Shikuchi again. Quinn out of mana. So he's in a lot of trouble. Wand already popped. Moo going to chase him. Should be able to get the kill on the Storm Spirit. A couple more shots, and we'll finish him off. A one for one. That cost them the black hole. But rotations are plenty from, from the side of Quincy Crew. Yeah, like normally you would say, oh, that's that's fine for like Radiant, right? Because they got the storm kill, which is you know massive at this point in the game. But if you commit black hole and you're trading one for one in cores, like it's it's not an amazing trade for them. Like you want to be using that first black hole to get a clean kill, like try and transition into an into an objective as well. But it hasn't really turned out that way. Yeah, uh, grab a tier one bottom. I will say that I do like that Snake gets Max uh, Carapace first by level 7. I think it's a really good game for it. You're playing against like Frost Shield, the Static Remnant from the, uh, from the Storm as well, like overwhelming odds on the Legion. And it reduces the cooldown massively as well on that spell. I think it's 5 seconds every level. So again, it looks like they're going to try and pressure mid, but all they have is Primal Roar right now. They don't have the Black Hole to use in this big team fight. MSS is level 6 now as well on this uh, Phoenix, so it'll be interesting to see how much they can get off of this first egg, considering they're playing against like Weaver. committing Peace. here. They got the break onto the Legion Commander. MSS in a decent spot to throw down that Supernova. That's exactly what he's going to do, but Moo comes in. The Wrath of Nature hits hard. There's the time lapse. So he's forced away. Soul Rip keeping the Tombstone alive, but one more shot. Quinn finally gets it. There's the duel onto the Nyx Assassin with the Primal War hitting onto the Legion Commander. They've got themselves at least one with Snake King going down. Sunray on a three of these heroes with Quinn moving back in. They'll get the kill into Eternal Emmy. Now they look over Brax. Ball Lightning low on mana is Quinn, so he's going to need some help here to get this kill. Or will he? He's really just right clicking down this Enigma. And ooh, ooh. thought he got the last hit, but ooh. Brax was able to survive with the stick. However, I say that, Yawar comes in and finishes him off, TPing forward and getting in front of him. So three kills there for the side of Quincy crew, and they lose nothing for it. Yeah, it's 
and again, it's at this point in the game now where it's super rough for them, right? Because they have this early game lineup that really doesn't want to be falling behind at all. All of a sudden, they're 2k net worth down. Like, every bad fight for them is effectively like three bad fights because of the type of lineup that they have. So, at what point, like, what are you trying to do to turn this around? Or not even at what point, what can you do to turn this around? You're down 3,000 net worth right now. You talked about how they need to be ahead to, to play this game the way that they want. But are they out of the water already? Like, I, I don't think any game is over this early, and I, I don't want to put you on the spot to say something no, no, like no, that. No. But it, It's definitely not over. Like, people can make mistakes as well. Like, it's all going to come down to execution too. But, like, they need to be able to play around this black hole, but... They don't really have any great way of initiating fights, like especially on the storm, right? Until Enigma gets blink or like Beastmaster gets blink or something, he, as long as he sees them coming, they shouldn't ever really get their spells off onto him. That's why it's such a good storm game, right? The only thing that, that could kind of stop that is this uh, Nyx with Vendetta or like... I don't know, it's, it's, it's really difficult. Because they, they kind of want to group up, right, on this uh, radiant side to take just like force five-man fights. Right, they, they're trying to brute force it rather than, like, make anything fancy happen, if that makes sense. And the way that uh, Quincy crew are playing is they're just splitting the map up with this storm that can, like, aggressively push waves because there isn't a huge amount of catch. Like, the CY Nature's Prophet can just open up the map a lot. And so they're kind of playing the Quincy crew game plan rather than the business associates game plan at the moment. Mm -hmm. And they're all going to start running top to try and find UR, but he TPs down to the bottom side of the map. Quinn takes over this this outpost and they've got Vendetta in 20 but everything is up again for Quincy crew you know they're not dealing with the longest of cooldowns I think what the longest one is Supernova 110 seconds and that's compared to Primal Roar level 3 is not bad it's 70 Black Hole is terrible at all levels it feels like against this lineup Vendetta at 90 level 1 and he's not getting that much experience like it, there's it's a lot like a here. 4,000 experience lead already as well, right? Which doesn't sound like a huge amount, but when everybody's at this level in the game, you'll feel it if you're mm -hmm. on the business associate side. Like this Enigma's still level, still level nine, and all the cores on the uh, Quincy Crew side are all level eleven. Clean up these Eidolons, clean up this creep wave and the Necro book, or will, will they get the Necro creeps? <laughs> they just put press the attack on the catapult, so they're able to take towers pretty, pretty. Yeah, it's actually easily. really good. Like, it, it's a lot better than it sounds, honestly. And Brax is keeping top here as well. They're going to try and take the tier two, like in trade. So both teams, but Quincy Queen might be able to get back to defend this here. I'm not 100 percent sure, but depending on how quickly little, they take, it's a little bit difficult for them considering they're playing against this Beastmaster Hawk. Like they have no vision set up or anything. So they're probably just gonna, yeah, they're gonna smoke up here instead and just trying to like link up and hook behind. Straggler right now is moved, so even giving up this tier two tower and getting a kill onto the Weaver would be well worth it if they can find this Weaver. I'm not certain they caught vision of him there. I think they did. And there's the blink dagger now for Leos. So it ends up being a, a trade on the tier two towers, which I think at the end of the day, business associates should be pretty happy about. Dyer's courier has been killed. But at, at what point do you try to to change everything? and try to, to fix the problems that you're having. I think uh, I might be having some problems with Discord. We could, we could reconnect if, uh, if it can persists. So Business Associates setting up towards top. Quinn's the only one up here, Spike Carapace, to try and move in onto this storm, but nothing happening just yet. All the while, just continuing to farm for Quincy Crew. Laylis down here, he's going into the Crimson Guard. And then you are sitting with this Maelstrom trying to find that BKB. Doubt are scanning. 
You only end up getting this tier 3, but they do do a little bit of chip damage to it. They smoke up. They're going to look to try and find somebody from the side of Quincy Crew. The only one really nearby, though, is Laylist, and he's got help. Yawar can be here at any time. He's got the teleportation. Laylist moving back onto the high ground, and Quinn's already here with SVG and MSS, so moving in on that for the side of Business Associates is probably pretty ill-advised. All the while, Brax continuing to just pressure towards top. So he sends these Eidolons out. He's trying to push forward, get a little bit more damage onto this Tier 3. And he's got himself top of the net worth. He's going into the BKB, probably a Blink Dagger afterwards. Unless he does want to end up finishing the Guardian Greaves if Blink is something that he's thinking about skipping. Taking a look. Where is Moo at at the moment? Has the Maelstrom going Lincolns, Eternal Envy with the Helm of the Dominator, Bracer, Necro 1, then the Vlads. With these neutral items that they picked up. Inkclaw, which is not being used. Essence Ring, Dragon Scale, and uh, the Vambrace for E. Ooh, Nether Shawl for the Lich. And the Clumsy Knight, which is such a good one, I think, with this lineup. Gives him that extra step of lockdown. Which is not something they're terribly lacking on. They've got the Sinister Gaze Duel. Electric Vortex. They could sprout. So we'll see. Still trying to reconnect here. With, uh, with Mo. Having a little bit of internet problems. But I'll carry you through this while we wait. While we see what we can get. We're going to go for this tier 1 tower over towards top. A little trade towers, and you can see already, Brax looking to continue forward and, and get even more. Look for the tier 2 tower, and they're going to start off with glyphing, but I want to catch anybody on the exit with this smoke. A scan came out from the Radiant side, looking thinking that maybe they're in the Roche. Pit looking for that first Aegis of the game, but they won't find anybody. That scan doesn't connect. So, he's got the BKB flying out, right? Yeah. Do they have a smoke ready to go with this? Yes, they do. Alright. So, they'll have a smoke. Probably move towards this big team fight that they've been looking for. Having that black hole. You know, the primal roar. Everything ready to try and go. And we'll see what they're able to accomplish now that they've got this BKB on the Enigma. Yeah, there it is. So he gets the BKB, they'll smoke up, and they... Their vision isn't exactly amazing. I mean, they've got a deep ward here that's not really spotting anybody. They'll finally spot the Phoenix as well as the Legion Commander, and I believe Quinn. So smoke ends up turning into them entering the Roche Pit instead of going for a big team fight. It's just Eternal MV with Brax in there for the moment. Although, I say that, they found Moo, he's got the time lapse off, Impale comes in from Snake King, and now, Essence Ring pop, Chain Frost bouncing around, doing a lot of damage onto both these heroes, that'll send Moo away from the fight, they've got themselves the duel onto the Nyx Assassin, they'll get the kill onto Snake King, the Tombstone is dropped, all the while, Roche is being taken. There's three heroes now committing to get, getting this Aegis. The only thing that they've got that's big to use is now the Supernova, we'll see if Quincy Crew are willing to take this fight. Black Hole with the Malefis, and down goes Quinn. He doesn't have buyback. Primal Roar onto the Legion Commander. They've got the Supernova down. This really isn't going to help them all too much as they've already lost Layla. So two heroes die, make it a third with the Axis thrown from Eternal Envy. SVG drops. They're going to try and get the TP out on a UR. He'll be successful in doing so, and so is MSS. But that is the fight that Business Associates wanted. And on top of that, they hold the Aegis. So they get the Aegis, the Black Hole comes in clutch to kill off Quinn. We talked about how this is going to be big on having these ults, having this lockdown that really is only available to them on these long cooldowns other than the Impale, the Nyx Assassin, and the Spike Carapace. 
And they work with it enough to uh, secure a couple of kills there. No buybacks were available. No buybacks end up getting used. And Quincy Crew now only up 2,000 net worth. But a little bit deeper into this. BKB's been popped by Yawar. They'll find themselves the Enigma. They've got the duel. They'll find the victory. Again, the Tombstone is dropped for an extra bit of gold. But Yawar taking a lot of damage from these boards as well as the Necro Creeps. He goes down. Eternal Envy gets the kill. There's the Sinister Gaze on a fear. So make it a two for one. I'm not sure Yawar realized what was going on. I see he was taking so much damage. Ooh, quick pause. Well, musical chairs for you. So it seems to just be Discord down. As we are waiting for Mo. But, you know, they'll go in re ready. Hopefully we can get Mo back into this. Uh, I'm trying to figure out what else we can use. I don't know what I have connected to my OBS that would get picked up. Hmm. Any thoughts, chat? Discord down. Do I even have raid call or anything on my computer? I have Skype still. But I don't think anybody really is going to be wanting to use Skype. Steam call? Do we try that? Alright, so bear with us. We're going to try and do a Steam call. I don't know if he's going to come in. Oh boy. There we go. We're getting a little bit of. I don't know if the people at home can hear Hello. you well. I just want to make sure. Say something again. Hello, hello. Yeah, yeah, I can yeah hear I'm, you. I'm. I'm. Oh my god. There's, there's some problem with Discord in the UK, apparently. That was. It's not my internet. I was like watching the game. I was like, man, I really want to be seeing this, like, talking about this massive black hole that <laughs> Brax just threw down. Come on, man. I'm just trying to see if I can lower your volume a little bit. You trying to say... I'm oh. saying you're coming in a bit too loud, but... Uh, what? That's you know, rude. I just didn't... Yeah, exactly. I can speak a bit softer if you want. I don't know Do some ASMR is. analysis. Ooh, I'm always a big fan of your ASMR. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> Um, so, uh, the point I wanted to make here, by the way, that it was, I think this uh, Crimson Guard timing on Lelis is like the most important thing here for Quincy Crew. Because if he can pop that Crimson Guard off in a fight, like a lot of their damage that comes out from business associates is just like all this like poke damage from like minions and Weaver and like this, this Beastmaster. It's all physical damage with the aura, right? Like they don't really have any magical damage at the moment. Mm -hmm. So they kind of just need to split the map up, which they're doing right now, until that Crimson Guard's online, in which then I think they should be confident in uh, taking fights. Oh, damn, you take third world problems. Man. It's just... Gotta get that Discord working. Maybe we'll get it working in between yeah. games, but for right now, I was like, I don't even know what else to use. Skype? Bot lane. Yeah, bot, they're pressuring this tier 3. They're actually getting a lot of damage out here. They've committed the tombstone to maybe continue to poke and prod. But even with the soul rip, it's some free gold for Quincy Crew. It's just Skype B cover. It isn't 2012 anymore. All right, we've, we've moved on in the world. It's fine. Google Hangouts. Google Hangouts, yeah. Zoom. Uh, yeah, we could uh, Badoo, if you want, I think was one of them. Radiance top tower is under attack. Um, so they lose a lot of their uh, HP on this bot tier three for the radiance for the dire side, but like the radiant tier three loses a li little bit of HP top as well. So 
As long as the tower doesn't die here, yeah. And like as soon as Lettuce gets this Crimson Guard, they instantly just start smoking up. And they're like, yeah, we can find pickoffs here. Oh, and they know that they're smoked though. This this ward drops down from SVG under a sentry ward and an OBS. That's why you see Moo almost like kind of baiting here at the front. Moo? To be. Well, that would have been a really good fight for business associates if they could have fought under their own ward. Yeah, they end up just pushing back Quincy crew who are waiting and not being as aggressive as I thought they would. Um, obviously not in that spot right there, but it feels like it's just 11 to 6, 27 minutes into the game. It's been a pretty passive, passive game from Quincy crew, especially with the fact that, you know, you use Black Hole and Roar, you're down on, on lockdown for quite some time for business associates. I think they were just waiting for the Aegis to expire before they wanted to go. Mm -hmm. um, which it has done now. And they're nearby. Quinn. Oh, they slay the ball. Lead it. And he's on the back lines. He goes after Eternal Envy immediately, but there's the Black Hole with the BKB that locks down Quinn, as well as Leilis. The Chain Frost flies through. There's the Impel coming in from Snaking. It bounces over to the neutrals. The Primal Roar to follow this up. They'll get themselves a second kill on uh, this Legion Commander. A two for one so far. SVG taking a lot of damage. The Supernova pops, stunning up Moo. Brax moves forward. Malefice out on S SVG. And make it a third for Business Associates. Oh! Stunned from the low ground, it's and MSS, he'll get caught, making it a fourth. Like, uh, this ward, though, on the high ground that they had before the fight side, like, secures so much of that fight as well. It was really well played, and I don't know, like, Quinn has this BKB on 10 seconds, but, like, he didn't pop it when he zipped in and went on the Beastmaster. So when he get, got Black Hole because he didn't have BKB on, he just instantly dies to, like, this uh, mana burn from the Knicks. And if you look at Snaking skill build, he actually maxed Mana Burn second after the Carapace because it's so good up against this Storm Spirit, right? Like, if he doesn't get BKB off, he's taking... Let, let's do the maths. So it's five times int multiplier. He's currently got 110... So it's doing like... What, like 550 damage? Maybe 600? Almost soon. I mean, you are doing... Uh, you, are, you are covering some NA region, so... Get yourself a little NA math. I'm not sure if you did the math right on that. Ooh, missed the impel. <laughs> well, the, the thing is, I know because you've got NA math, that no matter what I say, you can't contest it anyway. Like, so it doesn't matter if I make things up. It's fine. That's true. You're not wrong. But yeah, the uh, the warden game been... Uh, oh, hang on. This courier mid. That's an interesting play envy. Never mind. That's your, uh, your AC. That's yeah. Now dead for three minutes. Oh, no. Oh, that happens though. Like, uh, I'm I'm still hoping at some point people would stop like their couriers dying all the time. Because every game at the moment, like there's always a silly courier death at some point. Ooh, nice over destruction for you, are. So business associates have done a good job of now having the experience lead over Quincy Crew. They were down four thousand experience for a while too. I mean, this is... Look at these graphs and how long they were ahead for and never really got the job done. Yeah, I mean, Quincy Crew took, like, a, a couple of really bad fights in a row, so... That allows... Um, so, Quincy Crew took a couple of really bad fights in a row, so business associates are allowed to come back into the game. Um, but again, I, you know, like, going into the late game, you have to think... The main problem for them is that they don't have, a, like, a, a black hole stopper. Like, so if uh, Brax gets a blink BKB black hole off, they can't really do anything about it. Unless, like, Lelis goes to some weird Aetherlens dual build. I don't know. That sounds funky as hell, but... Blade Mail next for Lewis. Black Hole back up in 10. And they're going to smoke with oh, this timer. they smoke. Ooh, they have a mech on Undying as well, actually. Feels pretty farmed. For an Undying, at least. Oh, they see this uh, Nyx, though, under Vendetta. SVG gonna try and make a, a run for it. Oh, my God. 483 move speed against 370. Sneaking was catching up. 
And look at the split push though, like, Quinn's just pushing top, you are just pushing bot lane at the same time. They need to, they really want to try and like force this 5 on 5, right, that we talked about on Business Associates, but... It's up to uh, Quincy Crew to... Sneaking. Oh, he gets the, the Carapace as well as the Impel. They're not even going to use the Black oh. Hole, but Quinn just gets caught out so easily. And they might be able to link up again mid here now. Now that the, uh, the lanes are in an okay position for them. Oh, they actually lose their wave. But... Trying to force the buyback from pro Quinn. You are wanting to cut the wave, but he was slightly too late mid. Unfortunate. He does have bottom pushing in. I have, the problem is, like, he doesn't want to show, right? Oh, you are. Oh, sneaking's here. They've got the break. He'll pop that BKB. Oh, he needs to get away from this one, but it's not certain that he will. And now they've got the primal roar. They'll do some damage on to your war and finish him off. As Eternal Envy, with the help of this Nyx Assassin, they're getting that information and then moving with it. Oh, super greedy from snaking, though. I thought he was just going to stun straight out of Invis, but decided to go for the hit first. So not, not only did they get the kill, they also got the 9-second BKB charge out of the Prophet. Valley. Snaking just knew. And I love that Snaking's got AM just queued up as well. I think it's a really good choice. Like the, I think the main way of him dying in these fights is to a duel or like getting zipped on by the storm with an orchid or something when he gets that online. And the business associates want to play around this Roche pit now, obviously with the lineup that they have. It, it dies so quickly as well. They've got the Beastmaster aura. They've got the uh, AC as well on the Beastmaster. This weave is going to town, man. They are smoked up though, Quincy crew. Trying to come from behind gonna be in time. Spike characters already used just in case Quinn tried to zip in on that. Or an Icarus dive. Oh, Lelis is gonna let the courier live as well. Moo moving forward, looking over it. Quinn gets the first hit that silences him up and oh, with a break. Snaking just rips through SVG and this is Business Associates first net worth lead of the game and they're starting to beat <laughs> Quincy Crew in, in kills and net worth and it just again it feels like Quincy Crew may have been too passive Yeah, like you said before I think they were a little bit Maybe they should have been a little bit more aggressive when the black hole was on cooldown, right? That's their, their big advantage on business associates that they have that that unstoppable force for now Ball leaning forward they've got themselves they the, get the duel chill. And the supernova behind it, but they just don't have the damage to get the kill. The impel hits onto two of these heroes. It hits onto Quinn as well as Layla. Now they've got the three-man black hole, but that gets stopped by the supernova. Brax knew that egg was going down, but now the buybacks get committed by both, by just Layla. Falling forward, electric vortex. Ulti used by fear. Blink away from Layla. Use this buyback he committed already, and now business associates they'll back up and reset. This is really good though for Quincy Crew because now they can try and fight while the black hole is down again, like like we talked about, right? Um, you are has TP'd under a ward here, and Envy's TPing to his hawk. Yeah, Brax He's in trouble. comes through. Yawar comes over, and now with the Malefice, he is in so much trouble. Press the attack. Laylis is now committed to this, which might be a problem for him. He gets the duel onto the Nyx Assassin with the Sunray over, but they're just not doing the damage. The ball ending in, and he finally oh, gets the kill just at the last second. The Electric Vortex is on the Enigma. They'll find themselves a kill onto the Brax. They've got themselves two. Fear on the run. MSS with the Icarus type of the damage through from Eternal Envy is enough to get the kill. Fear finally dies. Moo chasing SVG. Sh Shikuchi forward. And it's a double kill for Eternal Envy. He is also top is dominating. To Dude, I never doubted him. All the hayers. Buyback's committed, yeah. though. It evens up the net worth. He's actually super farmed on Envy. He's sitting yeah, second they, on the they net did worth. Commit buybacks. They did commit buybacks, but again, at the same time, like, they... They want to try and just shove their lanes in while the Nature's Prophet's dead, right? Like, they want to be able to gain map control in the time that they can. Because this uh, pesky Prophet and Storm have been stopping them from getting their big five-man five -man push going. And Moo's going SMY Satanic, by the way. When he gets that, 
and then you like finish. If he ever gets to the point where he has that a satanic item finished, I actually don't know how they kill him anymore. Because like, he's gonna like hardly have any dual time on him. He's gonna like this zip and the orchid duration is gonna be reduced massively. Like, what what do they do? He's gonna have like three thousand HP, right? Ninja gear also. Dude, envious. He's hunting. Looking for Yuar. Immediately gets his trees cut down. And yeah, you use the BKB. You're hit with the primal roar. And now the ball laning over. Quinn trying to come in on this. But Brax is here. And Brax, he has Black Hole in just a second. Might even just commit it on Yuar. But they already have the damage after the BKB to get the kill. So the rest are in trouble as now the duel comes out of the Nixus assassin but all four heroes are here with a oh, three man shit. black hole supernova is not gonna matter queen drops layla's gone svg see you later the supernova pops and stuns everybody on the side of business associates but at this point it just don't matter because business associates come away on top dude they have no buybacks on the course like what's what do they do I mean, Lich can like slow the push down slightly with Frost Shield, but this is probably going to be at least two sets of racks, right? Spike Carapace, you oh, just bought no, back. On the frost oh, shield. SVG. Okay, they, I think they just go for it here. Yeah, like Envy's going to just go for the throne. Like Lich dies. Like they have no defensive capability anymore, right? They have nothing for the Snaking seconds. is played so well. The, the Snaking is played so well this game, by the way. He's won 415 on the Knicks, which doesn't sound amazing, but it feels like he's always been in the right place. Like him and Envy between them, we talked about their lack of catch. But if they're in the right place at the right time, then... Wow. They get it. It doesn't matter. See you later, nerds. They get the GG and, you know, talking about that as business associates take game one, Snake